day 12. Let's see if we can get the random access stuff done. But first, you'll notice the text is smaller. That's because I finally figured out how to make the BBC Master uh, emulator work, which has extra memory to put the video memory in, which means you can use 80 column mode without using up most of the RAM. So if I start it up and do free, we have loads more space. I mean, it's still not brilliant, but it's loads more. I also did a whole bunch of fixes to stat. The so stat now works. So uh, we can get a disk summary, which shows how much disk space you've used. We can get more detailed information, and these numbers are now correct. Uh, it's 256 records per directory entry rather than the normal 128 because we're using a 2K block size, which, now I look at it, should actually be listed here somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, I caught, stole all this from the original PLM version. We can get a summary of the uh, user locations. This will show you if you have files on users other than the current one, which is useful. But the most common thing is this, which shows you information about the files. In particular, how many records are in the file. This is the length of the file. How many bytes are used in the file. This shows you the number of blocks of disk space. And because these files are sparse, this means that these two numbers are not necessarily related. You can see that because we're using a 2K block size, nearly all these files use a single block. This one uses four because stat is huge, 53 records. Submit is smaller, using two blocks. And dat down here uses no blocks. Uh, this shows the number of extents, all these files are one, and the access mode, whether it's what various access flags are. And we're gonna have to do that one as well, but let's tackle read write, uh, read write, random access first. So over here, I made this little C program. This opens a file and it attempts to write random junk to a record, well, to record 80, which because there are 128 records per extent, this should be halfway through the first record. Write random just seeks to this record position. There are 64K records in a file, giving you a total of eight megabytes per file. And if I run it, uh, rand that, it says unimplemented. So let's kill this off and go find the BDOS code. Okay, right random. Uh, so this is actually going to be, let me see, read sequential right sequential right to a random record so this is actually going to be similar code to this so we are going to common some of this out uh, So where, where did I put read? Here we go. So this gets the block value, reads it. OK. So we're going to, wait, this moves the FCB on to the next block. I don't really want that in here. Yeah, let's just, I'm getting distracted by read. Let's look at write. Uh, 
So a lot of this code is fairly common. So for write sequential, we want this stuff, we want this stuff, and all the rest is common. Uh, sorry, this stuff and the rest is common. So write sector down here, this is trivial. This is, this can be commoned out. So we can have, uh, Hmm. I think there should be some error re reporting here, actually. And this will, this will set the sector number here to the appropriate sector for the block in the current FCB. Uh, and in fact, we can put this down here. No, we don't. We want to do this before we modify the uh, these fields. Okay. Seats to the block uh, sets the current sector to the block pointed to by the FCB. Okay. So let's take this code. and shunt it down here. So right, random. So we convert the FCB. We now want to take the record number in the R parameter and convert this into uh, the, the module extent current record parameters. So convert uh, random access record number to module extent record. Okay, so the record number is simply going to be, well, it's a value from 0 to 127 offsetting into the current extent. So this is just going to B uh, FCB R zero uh, parent comma Y that reads the bottom byte of the record number and it current record store the extent number is going to be the next five bytes. So that is the top byte of the bottom, sorry, the top bit of the bottom byte, and then the next four. So, so, and we can't modify the value because that has to stay as is. So, we are going to rotate the bottom bit left
we get the high bite we are then going to rotate it left carry into bottom bit and it with the extent mask and right okay and now for the top uh, we just want to uh, rotate right to get rid of the top uh, the bottom four bits because those were part of the extent number this gives us the module number so lsr a four times right. mcb uh, this goes into s2 uh, how ever we could just write but we only want to do this if the uh, we don't want to disturb the uh, the bit in here that controls whether the FCB is modified or not let me just have a look at write sequential and see what that's doing read sequential write sequential so that's here uh, close extent and move to the next one So this is not quite, hang on a second, how does this work? Oh yeah, move to the next one but doesn't open it. Okay, so the flag is irrelevant because we've just closed the file. In fact, we know that because we've closed the file, the flag is not set, so we don't need this. Uh, in fact, we know the flag is set, sorry. It's, when the flag is set, it means it's not modified, so we do need that. Okay, so in row. Uh, yeah, okay. So in right random. So stash in X uh, uh, we can't do arithmetic on any of the index registers so we can stash it in X but then we can't do anything with it but we don't need to okay roll a put not modified bit into carry um, if carry is set then or or in 
I do not think so there are I think LS are uh, so we need to get the carry into the top bit I'm just wondering if there's a better way to do it I was thinking that maybe I could shift the value left by one discarding the top bit then I could rotate it right by one to get the carry in but no the shift left does put the value in carry so what's the difference between a oh ASL and roll are different because with roll the carry goes in the bottom so I think that's as good as we're going to get okay so we have now updated the FCB but we shouldn't have done that yet because we would need to close the old FCB so actually rather than writing this stuff directly into the FCB we are going to stash these in temps so that now we are going to see whether things have changed so starting with the module we are going to Then we check the uh, extent byte. So if we get here, then we know that we do not have to switch extents um. Let's do it like this. So the Z if if the module number is equal hmm. No, let's do it like this. So if the values are different, then we want to uh, close the current extent Then we're going to update the FCB, now it's safe.
and we do not care about the not modified bit at this point. No, we do care about the not modified bit because you need to preserve the not modified bit for the case when we do not need to switch FCBs. Yeah. So then here we want to open or create the file. Uh, sorry, open or create the new DRENT. So uh, oh yeah, it also occurs to me that we can actually write the current record back. Uh, we don't need to stash this as we can, this isn't relevant to the, which extent we're using. So, Okay, if uh, the module number has not changed, then compare the extents. If either of them has changed, then we follow this code path. This changes us to a new extent. So now we can Seek to the appropriate block. At what point do we create a block here? So we should just be able to do this. So we seek to the appropriate block. Actually, we can put this here. And we want to load the current record here. 
the current record of course is set up there so this will update the record count of the FCB then we seek uh, and write so let me just take in one more look at write sequential Yes, uh, we can't put seek to block down here because seek to block is going to use the current record to figure out where to go to. Okay, I think that is code. So, rand that. Okay, it did a thing and returned zero. However, nothing happened because my test program has not closed the file. Incidentally, one cool thing about CPM is that because all the data about open files is stored and managed by the application you can have as many open files as you have memory for there are no file handles there are no kernel side resources that need allocating in fact the kernel doesn't allocate anything it's got no uh, dynamic memory storage at all it only ever has one thing of each type which is quite cool. Okay, rand dat, get a zero. We get a dat file. Oh, oh. So 80 records, because we've written to record 80. Should that be 81? And we have allocated a single block and I was kind of expecting there to be another F here let me just remove that okay that was working so rand that if we dump it we get nothing because uh, unallocated blocks aren't readable in CPM. Unlike Unix where they read zeros, unallocated blocks are treated as end of file. Okay, so here is our dat file. And here is our allocated blocks. You see, these are all spars. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, block five. And here is our eighty bytes of junk at the beginning of block 80 uh, you know what I'm going to just change that to zero I'm wondering if I've got an off by one error in the um, block numbering okay rand dat dump dat ooh I think we do you know because uh, you see we have written to the first block hmm you see you see the record count needs to be uh, one more than the current record
This is write sequential. Uh, we have incremented current record here. So the same code here needs to be the same. that dump that right we have one record like so if I do uh, if I then change this to two And stat, stat, stat. Uh, we have written, yes, to the third record because they have zero based. So we see that we still have allocated the first block, but if we go down here, this is the beginning of block F. So that's 0, 1, 2. So that has written to the right record. Uh, if we write to block 80 as before, around that, 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 81 records, one block. So you still, it's block F. Here is the data. Right, let's now try and write to record 150. That's above 128, therefore it will be in another extent. Okay, so we still have a dat file. Well, that's wrong. It should have created another extent, but it hasn't. Let's take a look at the file system. Yeah. Uh, what it's done, I bet, is that it's just ignored the fact that this is a new extent. Probably my maths are wrong. Okay. So this is this. We I mean, it looks okay. So we copy temp plus one into param. We copy temp plus two into uh, into the extend field. We copy temp plus two into s two with the not modified bit set. Uh, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that because we open file here will set it for us. We only care about that bit when doing the comparison. In fact, in fact,
we are going to ignore the not modified bit here because if we write it if we do need to change extents then we update it while the FCB is closed and therefore we don't care about the bit if we don't need to change extents we're not updating it the only place we do care is when doing the comparison so uh, not there here like so so if they are equal then we test for quality here if they're not equal we go through this okay Round dat stat dat. Okay, that still not works. Let's hit the debugger. I actually fire, filed a bug report, well, a feature request with uh, the emulator I'm using for an easier way to enter the debugger, and they have actually done it in a branch. It's just I haven't got round to checking it out and building it yet so I'm still doing it the old way around uh, that it hangs debug break one three six delete that reset continue and that okay Convert user FCB. We are now converting the random access record number. So our FCB is at 1A1D, which is here. So this is the current record. This is, these two bytes, are the random access pointer. There is actually a third byte that's part of the random access pointer, but only one function ever uses it. So at this point, we're ignoring it. So nine, uh, zero, zero, 0096. Okay, so fetch it, fetch the low byte, 96. This gives us the current record of 16. Okay, and right back. So that's put one six here. Um, we next fetch the low byte again. Nine six. Rotate left to put the top bit which is set into the carry there you go carry is set get the high byte which is zero shift left gives us a one and with one f that gives us the extent number which is one and stash okay now we fit the uh, R1, which is the top byte, that's a zero. Shift off to get the top four bits, still zero. Why am I putting A in X here? 
I think I had a plan. Okay, so that should be ignored. Put it in the S2. Put it, we don't want to write that back. Okay, anyway, we stash. Uh, that was changing it, changing S2, which is that one from zero to zero. Wait, we don't want that either. We just want to store it, and we don't want that. But we do want that. Okay, so we now do the comparison. We do want this. But y is pointing at the right thing. So compare it. It's 0 because we've just overwrote it by mistake. But it was 0 to start with. And with 7f and compare. They are equal. So we go here. Load the extent, which is 0. Compare with what's in 11, which is 1, because we want to change extents. They are not equal. So close the file. We'll close the dear end. Done. These are using temp. That's what the problem is. Great. So we actually want to LDA 10 plus 1, PHA, LDA 10 plus 2, PHA, push S2, push EX. Uh, this is going to be... go here this wants to go here okay we haven't done any error checking from internal closed files so if that fails then all kinds of bad stuff happened I'm going to need to overhaul how errors work Still one extent. I didn't save this. Okay. Uh, arrow dat, rand dat, stat dat. Still not working. Great. I shouldn't have quit this because now I don't know where my breakpoint was. Um. One three six. Okay, let's try this again. We know this stuff all works, so convert user FCB. Update the current record field.
calculate the new extent number, which is 1, and put it in temp 1. Calculate the high byte, which is 0, put into temp 2. Now, compare S2, we see they are equal, so now we compare EX, and we see they are different, so we push them, first EX, then S2, then we close the file, So now we update S2, now we update EX, which is 1, so here we can see the new FCB with a 1 here in the extend field, so we try to open it. carry is clear. It thinks it successfully opened the file. I'm surprised. We do want to match all the bytes, including S2. So Here's temp, that is param dph directory buffer. So this contains the DRN that is just found, which is this one. That does not match. So, we should be here, EX, S1 unused, S2. Okay, let's try this again. You see, one extent, rand dat. Okay, convert and go through the maths. Do we need to switch for a different extent? We know that we do. Okay, we close the file. Hang on, our extent is... We haven't updated the extent yet, so that's fine, so... We now update the extent. Now we call open file.
here. Okay. So we call find first. Here. A is F, the number of bytes we want to match. So. Read directory entry, check pause, no more files. We do want to do the fast check, which is, isn't one. Uh, in fact, we're going to want to go through this four times we reach the relevant. We want to go through f four records, so uh, I just wonder how I can. Uh, speed this up a bit. So here is where it is comparing extents. So let's put a breakpoint at 14F3. Okay, we're here. We're now trying to compare extents. So if I look at 4. 1A, 1D, we see we are looking for extent 1. So, things we have successfully read sequential files of more than one extent. This should work. We get the extent mask, we invert it. I think we only tested multiple extent files with the small file system. So I bet this stuff is wrong. So for the big file system, there can be two extents per directory entry. So what we do is we mask off the bottom bit. Okay, okay, this is working. We're wanting um, yep, so we are correctly opening the file. Uh, what this is doing is it masks off the bottom bit of the extent because extents 0 and 1 are both in the same dear end. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There are eight two K blocks. Yeah, okay. There are eight two K blocks per DRENT. A two K block contains four records. There are one hundred and twenty eight records per uh, extent. So. 16 by 2k is 32k of data per DRENT, which is two extents, each of which are hmm, now hang on 8 by 2 2k blocks, 8 values 16k per durant. This should be one extent. This value here is wrong. We get the extent mask from the value in the BIOS, which we get from here. So blocks on disk is less than 256. Have I got this completely wrong? Uh, are we using 2K blocks or not?
have I managed to get myself very muddled? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine A. We are using a small disk with one byte per block. So there are 16 bytes here therefore two extents right that is correct we are we, it is actually doing the right thing okay so it's we're trying to extend the dear the dear end for that from one extent that to two extents to do that what we do is we bump the extent number from zero to one thus indicating that this dear end represents the second extent of the file that's the top half here. Uh, it's assumed that the bottom half is going to be full. Uh, it's just you, you always put the extent number of the maximum extent. So we do want to find extent 0 and we do want to There's however we do want to update the version in the FCB with see if you open extent 0 seek to extent 1 then seek to extent 0 and close the file the the value in the FCB represents the extent you're currently looking at so when you close the file the extent will be 0 even though the file is longer than one extent its file is two extents so that will, in fact, corrupt the disk. Because it will write back a 0 where there should be a 1. I don't think that's relevant for what, you're doing, for what we're doing here. But this merge FCB into DRENT code needs to take care not to make the extent value smaller I think anyway I don't, that's, I'm look at that next I don't think that's relevant here so we are still trying to open our file. We expect this to work. We are comparing the extents down here. So we mask the FCB extent to do the comparison. See that's turned into zero. So we Store it. Why am I not using the X register? Is X being used by something? I don't think it is. It's not. Oh, because we need to subtract it here and we can't do that with X. Okay. So stash. Pull the mask. Apply the mask again to the one in the DRENT, which is also zero. Do the comparison. Are they equal? Yes, they are. and go around again because we want to compare uh, first S1 which we ignore go around again now we compare S2 which is 0 but that's just a byte so we compare it yeah, we ignore the top bit. We reached the end. This was a success. We found a file. And we return back to 
open file. Not that one. That one. So we do have a matching extent. So we are going to we are going to just finish through this code. We know this works. Um, I am, however, going to step through this stuff. So that's here, here. This is the four, first time we've actually exercised this code. Okay. So we are loading the extent in the FCB, uh, in the DRENT, sorry because we've copied the dear end into the FCB and the, va the extent value there is zero. That tells us that the file is one extent long. Well, the dear end is one extent long. We then compare this with the value the user asks for, which is one. No Z because they're different. So we fall into this code. Now, we should be hitting this condition indicating that we are now looking after the end of the file so we don't set that okay record count gets updated update the extent value with one the value the user first thought of so our open fcb looks like this we have extent one record count zero and the allocation map for extent one is here nothing is allocated okay so that's done we now go to write random we have just opened the file carry is clear that worked so we skip on to here make we make sure that uh, the record count is updated because the current record uh, is updated with respect to the current record. So, current record is 1 6. So, we are updating the FCB with the new current record value which is going to be 17 and we mark the FCB as being modified okay so there we go we've extended the FCB we now want to seek to the relevant block and allocate a new one I think this will work because this stuff does work. So let's just do a next. And we should be able to see in the FCB that we have in fact not allocated a block. So that does not work. So we want to stop at 1450 and go again. Okay, we're here. We get the FCB block value. So fetches the current block number 
in the FCB in XA. So get block index is going to be doing the work. Which is here. We look at the current record. Okay, okay. This is not updating it for multiple extents. Right, so we actually want to Um, uh, we're going to want to fetch the extent mask again. Which is this code. Uh, where were we? Get FCB block index. So this is the Um, actually, I think we're doing this wrong. Okay, so this tells us whether we are on extent zero or one or more for larger block sizes. So we now need to figure out how much to offset the index. So we need the value of the number of blocks per extent. Uh, so this is for converting from records to blocks and vice versa. We know that a block, sorry, an extent is always 16k. So we should be able to figure out how many record, how many blocks per extent by taking 2 to the 16, which is well, 16, and subtracting block shift here. Yeah, you see, this is turning records into blocks. So 
so Block, uh, block shift is not actually. Mm, mm. Right, this is more complicated than it looks. Now let's take a look at the documentation again. Uh, BIOS functions, cell disk, DPH. DPB, right. Block shift, so three is one K. Yes, so this is you are one hundred and twenty eight bytes. Shifted left three gives one K. So sixteen K is going to be another four. So that's seven. Yeah. So, seven minus three gives five. Hang on, five is four K, eight is eight K. 9 is 16k. So 5 is 4k, 6 is 8k, 7 is 16k. So 7 minus 3 is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, 7 minus 3. There is a shift. Okay, so Okay, so we're getting four here. So we go through the loop four times, we shift one left four bits, which goes to two, to four, to eight, to 16. Uh, which is the wrong number. We wanted to get eight. In fact, we wanted to get four because we're looking for the number of indexes, the num the index of the relevant bit of the allocation map. Uh, this 
This is the kind of math stuff I am very bad at. Can you tell? Okay, so there are four. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not a shift. This is an index. Seven minus three gives us the four we want. If the uh, if we're using 4k blocks rather than 2k blocks, which we are, then each extent is 4, 8, wait, if we Sorry, I keep getting this wrong. This is a small disk. Each of these is a byte. It's this 00OF here that keeps throwing me off. Okay, uh, if we are using 4K blocks, then a each extent is four bytes. So for a 4K block, the shift is four. So four, Five, six, seven is three. It's not right. Uh, so we want, let me write this down. Um, so if you're using 1k blocks, then the shift, the, the index is zero. For a 2k block, it's a four. For a 4k block, for a 2k block, it's an 8. For a 4k block, it's a 4. For an 8k block, it's a 2. For a 16k block, it's a 1. You know what would be easier than doing a sh than doing maths? Just using a lookup table. Uh, however, we might actually have some of this here already. We got its end mask. Uh, there's some better documentation for this. I will go and find the better documentation. Okay, here is the. Original Digital Research System Alteration Guide documentation. And the one thing I really notice is that none of these tables actually corresponds to what we've got here. So um, I was hoping that we'd be able to trivially get this from one of these tables. Uh, we probably could, but honestly, it's much more reliable for me to uh, simply simply this isn't simple. So the block shift here is one of these values. Okay, so if we start at four, which is corresponds to two K. That gives us a table of eight four two one. So to get the uh, to get the shift value, it get block shift, 
SEC SBC four TAX LDA start index table comma X. So then we get the current record. And we want to, after we've done the shift, we then want to add on this value. No, we want to multiply this value by this. Oh, for heaven's sake. Okay, so this is actually... How is the original code doing? Okay, read the next directory entry. Uh, not that one. Uh, this is this one for block shift. Okay. Compute disk map position for V records to HL. So in order to, we want to multiply our extent by one of these. Zero, one, two, three. So in fact we can get this by seven minus the block shift subtract the block shift. This gives us Um, the the appropriate amount that we need to shift left the extent number in order to turn the extent number which we have here stashed on the stack into the index into the allocation map. So we don't need to look up table. We just put this thing in X. Then we are going to ASL A dex. Count this many times. Now if the extent mask uh, hang on we want to pull our stashed value from here in fact, we don't need to. We can do this. Now, if our block shift is three, then because our block size is one K, uh, we can only, f uh, in order to get an extent, we need to use all 16 bytes of the allocation map. Therefore, the index is always going to be zero.
So, 7 minus 3 Uh, have I got that? Let me just take a look at my table again. Back this stuff out, okay. So here is our table. So block shift minus four gives us, yeah. We want 7 minus the block shift. So a block shift of 7 gives us 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. So the extent mask here for Four is going to be extent mask. See later. Ah, I thought there was a table of extent masks. There should be one somewhere. Rather than having to understand what the actual values mean. But it now occurs to me I have this in my BIOS lookup table. Here we go, extent mask. An extent mask of zero means that we are actually going to and the FCB's extent value with zero, which will produce zero. So we're going to shift it for shift that zero four times. So this will all work. Okay. We then want to figure out which block the actual index is on and add the two together. So we are going to have to stash this here. Then we shift it according to whether we're a big disk or not. Add on the allocation map, yeah, yeah, and then get the thing. Right. I hope this works. This was a nightmare. So uh, let's get rid of that. Rand that. That, that, still doesn't work. What is it actually written? Nothing useful. However, we now have our block allocated in what I think is the right place. I say I think it's the right place because this is clearly block 8. And block 8 is actually being used over here as part of stat. So that this should be block F. It's allocated block F, but it's written block 8.
So that's wrong. Um, I wonder whether... Using temp zero has confused things. Was a very easy way to test this, which is use a different temp. Um, and we also want to trigger it to regenerate the file system because the file system is invalid. Okay. So rand dat stat dat. 23 records, and yeah, that looks wrong. Uh, so, it's, so if, yeah, uh, that's changed to OF. I bet that if I did this again with for Templar 0, that would be uh, back to 08 again. So there's something that's using get FCB block index is using temp zero. Uh, such as set FCB block here. Okay, well, I don't believe we're using block uh, temp two, so let's just put users temp plus two. And I think we can do better than this. So we need a first. Uh, I was going to push A and X onto the stack, but I have to, in order to push X, I need A. So I can do transfer A to Y, transfer A to X to A, push Y to A, push WPLA there. Another PLA there does PLA set any flags? Yes, it does. So I can't do a PLA there, or I will upset this conditional, but I can put a PLA here. So I don't need that anymore. So that's a miserable piece of code with lots of register shuffling. This would be trivial on the 65CO2 because as I have mentioned many times before, I don't need that, the 65CO2 lets you push X and Y. Anyway, not using temp there is useful. Okay. Okay, rand that. Still only using one extent. That's because I haven't fixed close yet. So here we have that. We have a. This block has been allocated in extent one, which is correct. Uh, it hasn't updated the dear end to say there is one extent, which is why the value is not being reported correctly. Okay. So we fetch the directory entry for this extent. Uh, check the FCB has actually changed. 
find the directory entry for the extent, which is, we got it here. Update it now. When, um, I think, I think, right, okay, um, you see, I was worried about the user trying to, doing something like writing here, and then seeking back to extent zero, but without writing back the FCB change to disk, this value would be wrong but you're not allowed to seek back to extent zero from extent one without first closing the file, syncing it rather. So the value in the FCB should be correct. So all we need to do is that. Should be a this should be a y okay and regenerate because the file system is suspicious and that stat that two extents 151 records good that is the right answer So here we see one extent, of, well, we see an extent for a maximum extent of one, indicating that this dear end is for extents zero and one, and we see a block here. Good. Let's go back to my test program, and I am going to set a good high number. So, rand that. Stat that 12 extents, 1501 records, which is exactly what we expect after writing to record 1500, one disk block. So, what do we have in the file system? We have two dear ends, one for extent zero and one for extent 11. Is that correct? Should that be extent 1? I think it's all right because if we try to do anything with extent 1 then the value will be bumped when we write back any modified FCB. So I think that's good. I think that is actually working, which is honestly about damn time. Okay. Uh, let's just... Uh, I don't actually know whether, um, I don't, uh, well, hang on, I can't think about more than one thing at a time at the moment. I don't know whether... Uh, LLVM MOS has got A2I. It does not have A2I unless I haven't allocated it. Uh, I haven't declared it. Stud lib. Yeah, it's not there. Let's try Sturtol. No. Uh, the MOS, uh, LLVM MOS doesn't have an awful lot of runtime library, like 
this is it. You've got a few string functions. We've got a tiny amount of stud.io. We've got a tiny amount of stud.lib. Okay, but we don't have an eight. We don't have a stud.tol or an a2i. So let's just write one. v times 10, v uh, times equals 10, plus equals c minus 0. I'd like you to admire all the amazing error detection there. OK. How big has that made our program? Uh, not so bad. Uh, the code produced varies enormously from very good to not good. And it's also inlined A to I. Uh, ooh, there's a multiply instruct a multiply routine it's pulled in there. This is our main, which is I hope it's our main because it's huge. Here you can see it calling open file, uh, make file. Here it's fetched command line. Uh, that's interesting. Let's fetch the first byte at command line. It should be putting it into a pointer. Now here it is, it's putting it into a pointer. It sometimes does very odd things. Here it's doing the multiply by 10. Yeah. Anyway, it'll work. Okay, so rand. Ha. <laughs> uh, that was stupid. Uh, we're using the FCB here for the file name and the which means that the command line is actually contains the file name so let's just make a FCB uh, so Drive zero, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Not, 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 not. Empty. Not, not, not. Okay, so I should be able to type now a record number. Good, we've got our file, so rand 100. That seems odd. Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, I was hoping to get more done, but uh, no, actually, I thought that I had forgotten to call A2I here and was not setting the value properly. Um,
So this will print the record number it has parsed. So this will keep reading characters until the end of the line. That looks more or less right, to be honest. Okay, it has tried to write to... That's getting the right value. See, it's it's got the record number correctly, and write random is returning a zero, which means everything should be fine. But that is never getting bigger. See, it's only ever writing the first record. Also, why is there garbage up at the top here? at the top of the file system. That's wrong. That's extremely wrong. I mean... Yeah, you see, it cannot load the BDOS. Uh, something terrible has happened and it's written garbage everywhere. Uh, Here's our program. Here is the FCB that we've created. That looks right. Allocation map, four bytes. Yeah, that's fine. Then we have the relocation data. So my thought now is that this is going wrong. Yeah, that's corrupted the file system again. You can see that this has disappeared. That this has gone wrong because uh, it's trying to write to a file already exists that we have actually been testing. But this was kind of working previously. Okay, well, let's go and... Uh, let's find... Uh, do we have our... De we do have a debug. Does it print numbers? No. Facts. Let's just get rid of debug because we're probably past that at this point. Just simple trace messages won't be terribly useful. And also, uh, we should have get rid of those. This should be in a proper error message. routine for writing strings. I know because I wrote it. Here. Okay. 
Okay, well that hasn't actually helped, but uh, it's nice a bit of clean up now and again. Um, okay, let's put a stop there. Okay, rand one thousand break break one three F nine reset continue. Okay, rand one thousand. Convert the random access record number to MER. Well, let's take a look at our FCB. Well, that's kind of interesting. There is no record number here. Why? Because because I screwed up this. But this does mean that writing to record zero is corrupting the file system. So, so happens that we are in just the right place to debug this. So let's go through this. Uh, so we get the parameter and we do all the maths. We know this maths bit works. Okay, so we've put them in 11 and 12. So extent 0, module 0, uh, and the current record is zero. So, do we need to switch to another extent? Well, we compare these. They are equal. We compare these. They are equal, therefore, We skip this whole chunk of code here and go straight to here. Update the record count. Mark the FCB as modified. Here's our FCB, record count of one, current record zero, no blocks allocated. So we seek to the block. I bet my seek code is, what's the phrase? Bollocks. Okay, get the FCB block. Get the block index. Okay. So we figure out the shift value. The shift is three. This is how much we need to shift the extent number. Put in X. Get the current extent mask, which is O one. Get the current extent and and the two together. O O. Shift left to get the allocation map start. By three, we get a zero. And stash in temp two. 
get the current record, which is the, which is going to be zero. Yep. Get the block shift into x, which is four, and shift it right to get the the index into the allocation map. We now add on the extent start index, zero. Are we a big disk? We are not. So we get the index into the allocation map by adding on the offset. Which is now 16, yep, and return. What's wrong about that? So we're now getting the FCB block into XA. It's this, isn't it? I screwed this up. That starts at 1, 2 BC. OK. Set the current block number in the FCB to XA. Right. XA is OF. This is the block number we are trying to write. So, A to Y, X to A, push. Y to A, yep, push. Get the block index in Y. which is one zero. Pull OF, that's the low byte. Actually, we know this worked because we saw the OF in the allocation map. but the actual sector right was happening in the wrong place. So where do we go from set FCB block? Here. Seek to block. So get sequential sector number is Computes the sector number of the block into X of the block currently in XA. XA is zero. Okay, okay. Uh, that's why it's not working. So X wants to be the high byte. But we're using X here. Ah, this was a waste of time. We know these are free because that's what we were using before. Okay, so LDA 10 plus zero. LDA ten plus one that goes here. LDA ten plus zero. 
zero LDX ten plus one. I mean, it's miserable, but it should at least work. Okay. Well, that is the wrong value. It's just parsed, but it hasn't corrupted the file system. And we have a Okay, so the print routine I'm using has obviously got this wrong. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. This is the same mistake I made before. This is printing the wrong FCB. Okay, but that's worked. That has created multiple extents. Uh, it's also just nuked the file system. Uh, number of records is correct. Number of blocks is correct. So let's round 10,000. Okay, stat dat. Uh, was that number too big? I think it was actually too big. This is showing the number of records in the file, which can go up to. Well, it should go up all the way up to 64K. you see that's allocated another block and lots more extents ah I know what happened uh, no I don't know what happened I was about to say that I think it ran out of directory entries but no it shouldn't have created consecutive directory entries we should have gone from uh, zero all the way up to yeah, here we go. So we go, here's a dat with extend 0, OE, 07, 1F. So it doesn't have to create the ones in between. So let's make a bigger one. Doesn't like 8,000. Interesting. Uh, very interesting. Okay, that worked. That worked. Um. <laughs> Just thinking about random numbers. I bet this will work. Yep. Bet this won't. Yep. Uh, this means that my arithmetic is wrong. Oh, yes, yeah, so let's take a look at the file. Yes, it is trying to create modules, but I believe it's getting confused in places. Yeah, here's a module two. Okay. Let's just wipe the file system. Okay, 
rand 10,000 and it hangs. Break 13FF, reset, continue. Rand 10,000. Okay, we're here. Now, our FCB is at still 1 ADC, and here we can see the current record, and here is the random access pointer. So quite a large value. So we take the, we figure out the current record and put it in the current record field. We get the low byte of the extent, and I believe this works. by yeah, doing this stuff. Okay, now we fetch the high byte to seven of the, uh, the record number, shift it four, gives us two, and stores. Um, um, we saw actually the relevant values in the file system. So I kind of think this code, the, the arithmetic works, and it's something that's wrong with open file, create file. Anyway, we are now doing the comparisons. We have decided that we need to switch DRNs, which is correct. So we push those, we call close file. We update S2 with 2, which is the value we wanted. We call open file. This should fail. It has. We call create file. That should succeed. It has no error so we go here okay let's take a look at our fcb we see that we are indeed on module 2 extent oe current record 10 It should have created that file on disk. Because that's what create file should have done. It should have allocated a directory entry for it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think this might be working and this is actually a stat bug. So this is the stat source code. Uh, here, here is where we. Here is where we are calculating the. Oh, we are scanning the directory, and we are completely ignoring the S2 field. Okay. So uh, let's fix this. Uh, extents can now be a 16-bit value. Uh, here we are loading, we are scanning the directory, figuring out what all the file systems are. Here uh, we are determining the number of records and extents in the on the file. 
uh, when scanning the file system we're looking for the highest extent number and we're just looking at the extent field so we actually want to do uh, directory entry s2 times 32 plus DEX. So uh, and I will put this here. No member named S2 in their end. Yep, I called it something else. So this should be That actually needs fixing in the header. Wait a minute. Because calling S2 S brackets 1 is confusing. Okay. Blank file system. Rand 10,000. You got a file, and that's wrong. Interesting. This is producing entirely the wrong why is that getting a zero? Wait a minute. File control block. Okay, so we want S2, which is the second S byte, which should be this one. Uh, is my dear end structure wrong? user number, 11 bytes of file name, ex, s1, s2, you know what, I am going to fix that. involves rebuilding the MOS SDK, but that's a matter of moments. It doesn't rebuild LLVM. Oh, that does not take mere moments. Okay, and you change that to S2. Oh, oh, I know what it's doing. I know what it's doing. Uh, it is... Uh, it only it skips file names it's seen before, which of course happens before it does this calculation. So it's only ever looking at the first uh, 
Uh, no, that's not right. Uh, it does indeed look for files in the array and deduplicates. And we then, yes, we actually look up the no it should be going through this every time so why are we only seeing the file once I have a routine here Okay, so this should print the file name of every dear it sees. So we should be able to do stat star dot star, and it sees bitmap lots of times. I seriously need to clean up those headers. They should be called the same thing. Okay. That star dot star. Right, and there it's seen the files, and then it prints them. Okay, so rand 10,000. Stat dat. Sees dat once. Should be seeing it more often. Star dot star. It sees dat once. Okay, my guess is I do think I know what's going on. So putting a question mark in the extent field causes it to return, well, as it says in the comment, all extents, not just the first. And that is defined in the... Uh, documentation um, if the, the x byte is also checked normally it should be set to zero but if it's set to question mark then all suitable extents are matched uh, if the ex byte is set to zero we also and this is important want to put a question mark in the s2 byte but we don't we can't rely on the user doing this because the documentation doesn't say the user has to do this so we're going to find our setup FCB for find get all extents clear module byte in FCB get all extents put a wildcard byte in F in FCB and in fact we know that a is a question mark so. Okay. And there is my DAT at 79 extents, 10,001 um, records. So that file is actually uh, technically. 10,001 times 128 bytes long. Uh, let's try adding another. Uh, no, we can't add another zero because we'll run out of uh, bits. But that should work. So that is a long file. We should go all the way up to 65535. That's a bug. Uh, I can tell by the fact that it has allocated one block that it has, I believe, actually worked. Uh, however, the arithmetic in stat 
for here we go fe records has just rolled over so uh so yeah that was bad i think i can change that by doing this at the expense of much worse code. So Rand65535 stat that and it's still not right. Something's doing arithmetic in 16-bit precision. I am going to just leave that for now because this is stupid and I'm getting tired. But I believe that we are now correctly writing uh, random access files. Reading is basically the same, but easier. The one I don't want to do is filled right, but we're going to have to. But, and I'm going to deal with this next time. So good night. <laughs>